Hello and welcome to the latest episode in the Opto Innovations Budget EV Mini Conversion series. This episode we're going back to the mechanical side of things to have a break from the electrics because quite honestly that was getting highly stressful and highly expensive so we're going to cheer ourselves up by playing with some actual physical parts. Okay so we already had the motor sat in a subframe on the 3D printed mounts. That was great for making sure the mounts were going to work and we were fully confident in everything that we've done on that. However, when we wanted to start pushing things around a bit and moving things about, the mounts quickly failed. So it was at that point we had to get some laser cut steel and get some proper mounts made. So the mounts were already modelled in CAD. We sent that over to Fractory. There's a website link or something coming up. And then we ordered the laser cut parts, got them in, descaled them all, tacked them all together for now just so we could mock it all up again and built it up on the subframe that we had sat in a jig to make it easier to work. It's much easier to work on the subframe and the motor outside of the Mini and putting it on a jig means you can wheel it around and it's just easier to deal with. So we did that. Once we were happy with the mounts all tacked up, motor sat in there, we had purchased a new subframe for the Mini just because we wanted to do things the best way and we got that fitted to the Mini with the arms on the wheels, everything in place. So we set about lowering the motor into the engine bay through the bonnet, through the top if you like. And we learnt two things doing this. The first thing was, it's really hard to do in a Mini, positioning the motor so the diff stayed at the bottom and we didn't hit anything. It was quite an awkward angle game and in the end it was absolutely a pig to do. And the second thing we learned is that the auto subframe in a Mini is different to a manual subframe in a Mini. The subframe we designed the mounts for was the original subframe and it came out of an auto Mini because the Mini was originally automatic. The new subframe we purchased was a manual subframe and we didn't know there was a difference between the two. But it turns out there is. So on a manual subframe, the sides are quite straight at the bottom. On an automatic subframe, We've got this big scalloping that gives you at least an extra 20 mil of clearance. Presumably the auto gearbox is slightly wider than the standard, standard mini gearbox. Anyway, that meant the... So, not only was it difficult to go in through the top, but it was even harder because we couldn't actually fit the motor to the subframe, which it took us a while to discover the reason why we couldn't fit the motor to the subframe. So we pulled the subframe out of the mini again, put the automatic subframe back near the Mini, fitted the motor to the subframe with the wheels and the arms outside of the Mini and then fitted that whole assembly under the Mini and that was definitely the easiest way to do things. So moving forward, if we ever have to pull the motor, we'll pull the subframe. It's just a much easier process. If the engine was at the top more and more equally balanced, it's probably easy enough to pull it out the top. It always has been. but. With this electric motor and the diff, the way it mounts, it's really hard to get it to sit at the right angle when entering from the top. Anyhow, lesson learned. Okay, so we had the motor mounted to the Mini. Everything's tickety-boo, we're all alright with it. We then had to decide where to put the inverter and the charger slash DC-DC. So we went old school, started playing around with blocks of wood, put things in at various positions, basically tried every way we could to try and fit them in. When we were happy with the positions we'd decided on, we jumped back into the 21st century, got the 3D scanner out, took a scan of the whole engine bay with them in position, imported that into SolidWorks, modelled up some more brackets, sent them off to Fractory to get made. Easy peasy, straightforward, that bit. So we've got the motor mounted into the engine bay, subframes there and everything. Next we had to come up with drive shafts. So to work out what length of drive shaft we needed, we first fitted the mini drive shafts to the hubs with nothing fitted to the subframe except the arms obviously to hold the wheels in position and we took a bunch of measurements. We then removed the shafts, put the Outlander motor in the subframe, took another bunch of measurements from the same reference points to the Outlander cups that were sat in the diff. We used that information to do a bunch of rough calculations and produce a couple of photos for the fabricator, basically showing the mini shaft, the outlander shaft, how much of each shaft we needed to keep, how long the overall shaft should be and any er areas that needed to remain clear of weld or anything, just in case it was that close on the subframe. 
So we gave him all that information. That guy worked his magic. He turned them down on a lathe, made them sleeve into each other, welded them up and sent them back to us. Once we got them back, fitted the joints on again, test fitted everything, checked it all rotated clearly. It was all fine. Checked full steering lock on both sides to make sure the shafts didn't move while he was steering. Everything was fine. We then measured the position of the centre joints within the cups on the diff as we moved the suspension through its full travel just to make sure that we weren't bottoming out the shaft within the cups. That was one thing we're very conscious of. That was all fine. So that was a great time. We did a drive shaft. It worked great first time that. We were well happy with them. So we were happy with everything, drive shafts fitted, motors in the subframe, everything turns freely, no clashes, it was time to put the Mini back on the floor. Once we put the Mini back on the floor, we had a bit of a shock. I went to move the Mini and it behaved, the only way I can describe it is if you had a, a petrol or a diesel engine and you left it in gear and tried to push it, it went clonk, clonk, clonk. And I was baffled as to why. I didn't think it should be like that. I started researching on the internet and no one else's had behaved that way that had done an electric conversion. It, I wondered if I'd got a duff diff or a, a knackered motor or my drive shafts were locking up, but I couldn't understand why they would after all the checks we'd done. And then a guy mentioned on the open inverter forum that he'd experienced the same with a Nissan Leaf motor. It turns out on a three phase electric motor, if the three phases are connected just by the wires loosely touching each other there's no electric battery or anything connected it's just the motor wires but if they are touching the motor will not rotate as it is intended to do so i went outside sure enough the terminals were touching on the wire i just left it hanging because i didn't think there'd be any electricity in it anywhere taped them up the mini rolled smooth as you like it was like ah <laughs> lovely so that's another lesson. It's an interesting lesson. And if anyone else is going down this conversion route, bear that in mind because it could save you a, a fair few hours of panicking that something is broken. Okay, thanks for watching. If you could do the usual like, share, subscribe, that'd be massively appreciated. Next episode is going to be the design and build of the battery box, I think. And then after that, we're on to the controls again. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how we get on.